he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpet, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy. Red Connors and I had ridden the 50 miles from the town of Twin Rivers to attend the funeral of my old friend Clem Watson, sheriff of Pima County. Clem's death had come as the climax of a strange series of bank burglaries in the surrounding counties, each spaced exactly a month apart. And in each case, the method of operation would be the same. An elderly woman would come into the bank to open an account. That night, someone would break into the bank, manipulate the combination of the safe, and make off with its contents. But not until the robbery of the bank in Pima City had the old lady been connected with the burglaries. Two days ago, the banker there advised the woman on some investments. That evening, returning to his office to take care of some unfinished work, Clem Watson and his deputy answered the call for help on the run. Clem died instantly with a bullet through his heart. By the time the deputy regained consciousness and a posse could be formed, it was too late to do any good. The empty buckboard had been found in a canyon a few miles out of town, and a thorough search of the surrounding countryside failed to reveal the slightest trace of the old woman or her companion. The banker thought it unlikely the case would ever be solved, but I didn't intend to give up so easily. Clem Watson had been too good a friend of mine to let his murderer go unpunished. But without a trail to follow, it was a puzzler. Then a thought struck me. Each robbery had been closer and closer to home. And since Twin Rivers was the nearest town to Pima City, it was logical that our bank might be next. Got the answer, Hoppy? I don't know, Red. It's just a hunch. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Vig, we've had a series of robberies now all over the state in the last month. We haven't too much to go on, but we think it's an old lady. So if any old lady should come in here and want to have a talk with you, you'll be sure and let me know, will you? You bet I will. But I'd like to see anybody figure out the combination on that safe. <laughs> mm, it looks like a new one. It is. came from Boston. I bought it when the Cattlemen's Association started making such large deposits with me. I see. Well, nevertheless, you keep your eyes open. This woman's a pretty smart operator. I used to be pretty good at these things. Careful, you might leave fingerprints. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was only kidding. <laughs> we'll check with you later. All right. So long. So long. Hi, lawman. Have time to say hello, Hoppy? Well, hi there. Hello, Harry. Hello, Hoppy. Nice to see you. How are you, Dad? Good. When did you get back from Santa Fe? Last night. And, Hoppy, we have the most wonderful news. The doctor there said that Harry was strong enough to go back east for another operation. The one we hope will give him back full use of his legs again. We expect to leave by the end of the week. Ah, oh, that is good news. And it was good news. 
for in the five months that had passed since the wealthy Adele Keller had brought her accident crippled husband out from the east and had taken a house out in the nearby hills where he could regain his strength, we had all come to like and admire her. Not only for her devotion to her husband, but for her kindness and charity to everyone in the neighborhood. Well, we'd better be on our way. I'll give you a hand here, Harry. Oh, thanks, Oh, Red. You could save me the trouble of going out of my way if you take these groceries out to Mrs. Pagel's place. Poor dear, she's had a hard time since she lost her husband. You're not going to trust Red to deliver food, are you? Now, Red, no nibbling on the way. Not even one of these big Newtons? Not even one. But I tell you what I'll do. How about you and Hoppy coming to dinner tomorrow night? What about tonight? Well, um... Red, it's a long drive from Santa Fe. Give the lady a chance to catch her breath. Yeah, well, I'll be holding mine while I eat some of Miss Adele's fried chicken. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> now, Red, don't you burst until tomorrow night. It's about six. Yes, let me help. Oh. Ooh. Red, how careless can you be? Oh, I didn't mean to squeeze your hands so hard. I guess you don't know your own strength. Until tomorrow night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, go on and deliver your groceries. Where are you going? Back to the office. I got a lot of work to do. I had worked far into the night trying to find a police circular I remembered seeing a long time ago. At last, I found what I'd been looking for. Red. Hey. Hey, look at this. What is it? Take a look at this. It's a wanted circular put out by the Chicago Police Department about four years ago. Wanted for bank burglary. Frank Ballard, age 50, height five feet, four and a half inches. He has smooth, fair complexion and talks in a high-pitched voice. His mo... Mo does... Upper, upper, uh, <laughs> operandi. When did that furniture get in there? Modus operandi, that's big city police talk for method of operation. Well, why didn't they say so in the first place? Read on. His modus operandi is to use a pretext to look over a small town bank, then to return at night and learn the combination of the safe by feeling the clicks of the tumblers with his fingertips, which he sandpapers to the quick. Hey, that's a pretty slick one, that is. That must be how that safe in the bank at Pima City was opened. Oh, you're barking up the wrong tree there, Hoppy. That was a woman. Now, wait a minute. Ballard's description says he's a small man with a high-pitched voice. He could have passed himself off as an old lady. Maybe that's how he threw everybody off the track when he changed back into men's clothes. Say, maybe you got something there. Ah, uh, maybe and maybe not. But nevertheless, I'm going to send a telegram to the Chicago Police Department. I want all the information on Frank Ballard I can get. I'll be right back. At 9 o'clock the next morning, I received the answer to my telegram. All it said was, Frank Ballard died in Illinois State Prison two years ago. That let Ballard out as far as I was concerned. Cassidy! Cassidy, come here, quick! Come here! It's happened. What's happened? Come inside and look for yourself. Come on. It was this way when I opened the bank this morning. They got away with over $25,000. Well, that's what you get for not letting Hoppy me know as soon as the old lady got in here. There wasn't any old lady. There wasn't a stranger in the place all day yesterday. Hoppy. That's, that's a different mod, mo, modus, modus operandi. I'd say it was the same. Modus operandi? What's this idiot trying to say? Why, that's city talk for how the burglars did it. I don't care how they did it. I want to know who did it. If I don't get this money back, I'm a ruined man. Mr. Biggs, I have a much better reason than that for getting these burglars. Come on, let's see if they left any trail in the alley. So far, the pattern was the same, even to the Jimmy Breer door. And, as usual, they had erased their footprints. They had left no trail. Well, looks 
Well, if we're stuck, Harvey, what's the next move? We're gonna round up every stranger in this community for questioning. We spent the day questioning every dubious character we could find. But in every case, they either didn't fit the description or they had perfect alibis. All right, you two can get out of here. Well, what do we do now? Uh, too late to do anything now, but the first thing in the morning, we're going to head south and warn that bank at Mesa Verde. If the old lady hadn't been there first, you mean? If she has, we're going to put a guard in every bank in the state. Oh, come on, we're due out at the Kellers. Hey, at least we won't leave in the morning hungry. <laughs> yeah, dell has been simply wonderful. Nothing's been too much trouble for her. Oh, never mind that now, Harry. Come on, everybody, dinner's ready. Ooh. Let me give you a hand, Mr. Keller. Oh, thanks, Red. I can make it. Red. You're getting clumsier every day. Now, where have I seen that face before? Well, it does look a little like Ed Casey, but not very much. Uh, of course, that's not very flattering. Ed Casey was a, a bartender that left town owing Red $10. Yeah, yeah. I could have sworn that was Ed's picture. Come and get it. Hoppy, you sit there and Red right here. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Red. <clears throat> Red. Well, I was just passing it. <laughs> have, roll, Red. have all you want, Hoppy. There's plenty more. Thank you. We heard there was a holdup at the bank last night. Was anyone hurt? Oh, fortunately not. It wasn't exactly a holdup. It was a burglary. More than likely, the same old woman did them other jobs. An old woman bank robber? Well, that's preposterous, Red. Oh, it ain't so pre... It ain't so preposterous. What do you think, Hoppy? I think Red's been reading too many detective stories. When do you figure on leaving for the East, hey? Well, Hoppy... Day uh... after tomorrow. We're driving into town in the morning to telegraph a reservation. I hate to see you go, Mr. Dale. Sure gonna miss your fried chicken. Well, we'll miss you too, Red. Why don't you have some more? Don't mind if I do. Oh, this gun belt seems a little tighter. <laughs> Thanks very much for the dinner. We were glad to have you, Hoppy. Good night to you. Have a good night, Hoppy. Good night. Good night, Red. Good night. Hey, Hoppy. Good evening to you. That there picture didn't look any more like Ed Casey than a mountain goat looks like a shorthorn steer. I know that, and you know it, but Adele and Harry don't know it. Would you please tell me what this is all about? I'll explain it to you on the way into town. Adele's sore fingertips, I had noticed at dinner, the fact that they had been away every time a bank had been burglarized, and the picture we had seen in their home certainly pointed the finger to Adele and Harry. It looks just like the feller in the other picture. I'm sure it's the same man. Well, let's take some handcuffs and go out there and bring them in. Oh, we've got a circumstantial evidence. I can't accuse them of anything until I've got some proof. I want. I'm going out and search their house. You stay here and keep an eye on them. I want a full report on every move they make just in case I don't find what I'm looking for.
I made the reservation. We pull out of here tomorrow. I wish it were today. Calm down. You've been jittery ever since last night. Oh, I can't help it. That crack red made about the old woman has me thinking that Cassidy's close to the truth. Ah, oh, forget it. If Cassidy had anything on us, he'd have made a move by this time. Where are you going? If I can get Red alone, I'm going to get some information out of him. Hello, Red. How do you do? He went out on business. Oh, I just came by to... I just came to tell you and Hoppy that Harry and I have made train reservations. We're leaving today instead of tomorrow. So if we don't see Hoppy again, tell him goodbye for us. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye, Red. Goodbye, Miss Adele. We're in trouble. Cassidy's closing in on us. What makes you think so? There was a file of wanted circulars on Cassidy's desk. And it was open to Dad's picture. we got to get out of here fast. We'll pick up our money and head for the border. Let's go. I made a search of the living room, the bedrooms, and the kitchen. I had turned up nothing that would confirm my suspicions. But in the corner of the cellar... City bank wrappers. Found the old lady, too. What? Where, where is she? Right here. There's her white wig, her glasses, theatrical makeup, the whole works. Yeah, but where's the old lady? She'll be along soon enough. We'll go out and hide our horses and let them walk right into our trap. Get your hands up, Cassidy. You too, Red. Get their guns, Adele. Now go downstairs see if you can find some rope to tie them up with. Right downstairs, you two. Roll by the post. Here, keep them covered while I tie their hands. Come on, get your hands behind you. This was one time you were too smart for your own good, Cassidy. Or your big mouth friend was too dumb. What did I do? You tipped me off when you made that crack about someone pretending to be an old woman. And when I saw the Frank Ballard wanted circular on Cassidy's desk, I was sure he was tying me up with a deal. Uh, so the old coot was your pop, huh? Never mind the talk. You get the suitcases out to the buckboard while I set the place on fire. So that's the way it's gonna be, huh? Why don't you just shoot us and get it over with? Have your friends hounding us when they find your bodies? Oh, no. This way, it looked like you were trying to put out a fire and got trapped. Nice people. Sorry, next to yours, Cassidy. 
Keller had done a good job with the ropes, and now I could smell the coal oil he was sprinkling around the kitchen, and I could hear the crackle of flames as tinder dry wood caught fire. This old place will go up like a furnace. Don't give up, Red. Just keep working. It's getting awful hot, Hoppy. Looks like we're goners. Oh, you'll make it. Hey. Knife and a string blade in the left pocket. Can you get to it? Ah, try it. Get a little closer. You didn't got it. Oh, I can't get it open. Press the button. There, I got it. Ah. Watch your hand. Get up. That's way, Red. You'll never make it. Stand back there. Stand back. Come on, out the window. You go first. No, come on. That cellar ceiling goes all the way in. Come on. Tracks of Adele's buckboard left an easily red trail. Tex, let me have your gun. I'm after a couple of bank robbers. Adele's team had plenty of speed. It was some time before we caught sight of them. Like a lot of others, Adele and Harry thought they were smarter than the law. And now they'd spend the rest of their lives in the New Mexico State Prison, learning the hard way that crime never pays. Hi, little partners. Have you been doing anything to help Mom around the house lately? You haven't. Let's do all we can to help her, huh? I bet you'll have fun doing it, and I know Mom will appreciate it. Will you do that for me? Not till next week, so long, and good luck. There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys ray. 
Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, he'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. Hopalong 